Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Planet Zoo. Welcome to this lovely Sunday and today with one of the craziest episodes in the last couple of months. Uh, reason being is that this episode is uh, quite long and I even cut out like 50% of it already. It, for whatever reason I really didn't feel it took that long and I, I just refused to make two episodes of it. Um, at the end of the day there will be kinda-ish two episodes of it so um, you'll see. But anyways, today we are going to uh, bring in the last country of Summer Lake and this is of course Australia, you know, that's um, because of the DLC that dropped uh, two weeks ago actually already. So on Tuesday it's been two weeks. Um, and yeah, we are finally back here in Summer Lake. Uh, actually it took a while as I said before we went back and um, I'm also quite happy that we are now about to finish this project. It's as much as I loved it, um, it really feels it's time to wrap it up. You know, summer is coming to an end now, autumn is just around the corner, knocking at our door. You know, people are already dressing uh, a little bit like uh, it, it's already winter. So <laughs> uh, even though I'm still freaking burning in my room here, it's still very hot in this uh, attic room. I mean, it's just pretty clear because um, still the sun is shining quite a lot onto it and then it's like super warm in here anyways but yeah let's not talk about my temperature in my room let's talk about what is happening today so first of all i won't be here for the entire uh, voiceover for the time lapse because there will also be a real time part in which i'm going to announce a little contest here for this wonderful summer lake so in order if you want to take part in that make sure to do so and also for those of you who uh, sticked with me and the commentary until this very point in time um, I'm very thankful that you did and also in case you haven't subscribed yet make sure to do so to help me grow a little bit more um, that would be awesome I really want to reach 50k this year and uh, lately it has been all good and you know it was really good and still see so many people watching constantly without being subbed and you know I'm just kind of keeping keeping the reminder going here um, because you know that just helps me a lot but now let's talk about this wonderful coral reef um, yeah that, that's what it is and the Great Barrier Reef obviously has a lot of uh, coral reefs you know that's where the name comes from and stuff and um, I just wanted to test something here uh, how to do it like I'm let's say 60 to 70 percent happy with how this turned out the reason why it's actually just quite a low number of happiness uh, comparably to, to other stuff I have. It's mostly that it doesn't create the shiny color in the water that I want to. Like I wanted to have the water look a lot more greenish, turquoise-ish, um, but at the end of the day it didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. Um, it still looks really cool in game, like when you do, when, you, when we do the tour in the end, it really looks cool um, because the screenshots really don't pay this justice not at all um, but like in the game it really looks totally awesome and you can see that I'm just creating all of these custom uh, coral reefs here by using this um, flower bed which is one of the sole pieces from the flowers that you can recolor and then I was using a whole bunch of these new Australian plants because they just look awesome um, underwater because they just have that feel of like these spikes and stuff underwater it looks like a little bit like a coral and really helpful to do it that way and yeah I just I think it's um you know, uh, considering what kind of limitations we have in the game right now, I think it looks really cool. And I think it would even look better when you use that for an underwater viewing. Uh, I was thinking if I could bring in one here, but I'm still not sure if I want to bring in the crocodile because my initial idea was to bring in the crocodile in the water part. But I guess it doesn't really work out because the, um, the main problem is we have the saltwater crocodile already in, in the Everglades. And we also have the issue that they're super big and they're very needy when it comes to space requirements. And so I actually has decided against it and we will have a kangaroo farm at the very end of these islands over here. So you can see it's, it's quite a lot of work going on here with the, uh, the different uh, stuff I do here in the lake. Like it took me quite a while to really get this lake going. Like we are already over one and a half hours into my recording footage here and I'm still just doing the lake. So I really wanted to pay attention a lot to the lake over here because the, the story of Australia is that you come in Australia from a bit more of a central part of the the, the continent um, and you go towards the uh, entrance of the Australia region where you will have a little Uluru inspired um, scale model 
Uh, also, I'm gonna talk about that a little bit. When we are there in the video, I'm gonna talk about this topic a little bit because I think there has to be said something, um, which I will do, but you know, we'll, we'll get there. Uh, but yeah, I've got the scale model. So you're coming from the inside of the country and you go towards the coast and then you cross a bridge towards an island and on that island, we will have the koala bears or the koala, I'm sorry to, to call them bears. It's just, I know they're not bears, but you know, the naming is always that way. And um, they're just fluffy, okay? Let me let me call them fluffy bears for, for one sec again, okay? So the koalas are on that island and yeah. You can see there was already quite a leap forward. Now we have already that bridge in. I did already some foliage testings and stuff. And uh, yeah, so slowly the picture comes together. This is already preparing for the um, kangaroo farm, which will be at the end. Um, it's not going to be in today's episode because just I couldn't fit in more than 10 hours of footage, which it is now. It's 10 hours of footage that went into this episode. It's just ridiculous. Um, and I think there is still some more stuff I did when I forgot to record because in stream or whatever, I sometimes just forget to record. And yeah, also thankfully Frontier along the way of, of this project, they fixed the three meter path issue again. So we can use it again so um because that build when i started doing this build it was still in the early access of the pack and then um there was the three meter path was broken and i stopped then doing it because i couldn't just do it with the four meter path it just didn't work out and uh, so yeah that is the reason why i also needed to wait until this is fixed and now as it is fixed we can we can finish that up now we come to the scale model of uluru which i i won't say falsely but um Let's say it was a bit clumsy to call it uh, Ayers Rock. The thing why I did this is pretty much because I didn't have the knowledge I should have had. Um, and so I want to actually, um, I do apologize for using that name and for potentially offending some Australian people. I just didn't want to do that at all. For me personally, since I'm not an Australian, I've never been there. I'm not very familiar with the Australian history. I really only looked up the name of this big rock that I definitely knew and um, I definitely also remembered that it has the original name Uluru but I didn't know the story why it was called Ayers Rock. My my knowledge was that the Ayers Rock is basically just the the naming of this traditional mountain um, which is a bit more common in the English language so that people in the world know it because like when I looked up the name it was mainly um, checking what is more familiar for people so just so I know that people are aware of what I was talking about you know and this is the, the sole reason why I chose to go with Ayers Rock and um, all, all of your comments actually made me aware that there is a, a story to the fact that the colonials um, basically took away the original name and also kind of did some actions that were not really cool at all and then just named this rock after one of these um, colonial dudes that, you know, just um, did some shame on it. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sorry for, for naming that falsely. Um, so this is, in fact, definitely a little bit of an apology here. So we have a scale model that you guys will be able to download um, from the workshop. So uh, as, as a kind of little apology, that is definitely the Uluru Rock uh, scale model if you will and i'm not going to call that otherwise now um it even gets a little bit of a um education plate at the at the foreground now uh, just to make sure that you know i learned my lesson and and did some research on that and so that everyone else know it um it will be on this plate now isn't that a great story i really hope that's okay for you guys so again it, there was no like intention there was not like really there was no intention at all um, after calling it the way it did and I just checked that I my flight sim video of Australia I even called it Uluru um, simply because back then I didn't even check what is the more popular name I, I just called it Uluru because that's what the name was I found for, for uh, from in-game and stuff so yeah, whatever. I mean, I think I, I made my point here and you guys know what I meant. And um, most of the comments were super polite and very helpful. So thank you guys again for those. All the other comments I blocked and I think it's very, it's very much um, likely that I will block these kind of racist comments in the future again. So um, yeah, not my, not my kind of stuff. So thank you so much for all of you who participated in this very good discussion. And uh, so here's my little excuse again. Um, but now we move on with a little shelter building. And as I said, um, this is ma mainly the intention of that is to basically build this area out as an um, as, a, as a journey from the uh, central continent towards the coastal 
part. And then on the other hand side with the um, kangaroo farm, it's kind of framed so you're back at the continent. So that, that, is, the, that is the main story. And so what we have here and just in front of us um, is a little bit of a more rundown building style, which is a bit more reminiscent of the central um, Australian farms and stuff. Um, and um, also a little bit reminiscent of the gold uh, ghost towns, which were due to the gold rush, um, which is another thing I just checked why it, you know, why all this rundown uh, pieces make sense is basically down to the fact that there was a huge gold rush in the past and then once that was done many small towns got abandoned and these rundown kind of little ghost towns um, were developed so to say I, you know is developed the right word it created or just exists i guess i don't know you know something like that but yeah you can see i'm, I'm just using you know, lo loads of this scrap metal um some kind of wooden pieces that go together well and just of these wonderful weathered looking pipes um, i love this piece by the way it's just so good i love i love that rusty um re weathered copper is it copper iron iron fence uh, te texture thing i love it anyways guys that shall be it for my voiceover you now have some uh, certain nearly 10 ish minutes of uh, time lapse left i really hope you enjoy that i'll tune up the music for you guys and um i will then see you in the real time part where we talk a little bit more about this habitat and we see the koalas in action and we also talk a lot about what is going on with the contest so see you there you can also skip via this little jump uh, marks in the video
Hey everyone, here we are in the real time part. As you can see, we are standing here right in front of the Australia area. And it's not, as I said, there are a few things I still need to do, but um, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So we start here from the German area we did last time. So in order you want to check that out, it's also in the links and in the, you know, in the top right uh, info cards, you will find that. But if we go here, this is how you enter to Australia. As I said, you are coming from the central area of the continent. And this over here is the look inside of the scale model, as we talked about a lot about this. And I did a little nudge to myself. Um, there you see this wonderful Aussie sign in the back. And, you know, this time I really wanted to make a little bit of fun of myself, you know, calling that Luru Mountain out falsely. I used another term that is, you know, sometimes uh, misconceived uh, as a use. Um, you know, I, I, I know that a lot of sports people from Australia are called the Aussies and stuff but you know I know that this this term is also not like super often used and I don't know I just put it in as a little nudge to the fact that I messed up with the with the namings and so I put this in as a little let's not say Easter egg but you know um, some some kind of reference to me being stupid okay and then on the left hand side over here you can see um, a wonderful shop that is now about to be used by one of the wonderful staff members that come over um, boom there you go so that's the info point we can get some stuff and then you know you have this like um, window with the shutters and stuff I, I really like how the shutters turn out by the way and then you have this Aussie sign and you have a toilet over here if you you know may need this and on the right hand side we have a little barbecue area um, I quite like this barbecue area as well we have this wonderful barbecue lamp post grill thing I put like a fire below so it's kind of glowing a little bit you have all this kind of scrap run lying around a little bit more broken rundown and you have some ac actual picnic tables and of course if you want to grab some stuff there are some vending machines hidden in here so we got them with the pack and so I thought okay have them and so it's basically just a very theme park ish entrance area to this animal sighting scene over here uh, the right hand side is already kind of covered nicely. I will exchange some of the plants and put some more bamboo here so it's looking a lot more like uh, Australian foliage right here and not like too much, uh, you know, European. And I tried to use some plants here that would still be able to be grown in Europe even though it is already kind of problematic. But we will talk about that once we cross the river. And, um, well, actually river is the wrong term. It's, it's the water pond, you know. But this is like already uh, hinting you at this koala island, a little bit of a rundown broken sign. And we just uh, get onto this and we have this little zigzag um, roundish uh, swooping, I don't know, uh, bridge. And the reason for that is I just want you to look down into the coral reef, okay? I want you to, to really experience that, look to the left and to the right. like. In a real zoo, you would have a lot of fish in here, you know, that would be like a flourishing fish pond with a lot of uh, different um, species in here, just some colorful fish and whatnot. And um, I will actually do something about this. I'll talk about that later. Um, so to make this even more realistic, just hoping that we potentially can back uh, get, go back in here in the future when we get some fish or at least, you know, some VFX. I would even be happy with some very nicely done VFX in here that act like an animal um, for like ponds. That would be awesome. Just like we had in uh, in Planet Coaster with all the custom VFX that people made. You know, in terms of fish, you know, like really like these kind of pond fish, I would totally use that. And, you know, if they act still like, let's, let's say they, it would be enough if they would act like a, um, education sign you know you put the VFX in it's kind of uh, invisible and then you have the fish swimming around in in like a very nicely done loop just like the exhibit animals and then this acts like a focus point for the guest and they look at it and they can put like an education board here and it kind of takes the VFX as the animal I would totally look uh, at that as a doable thing and I would like that too um, I don't really need this animal in there um, too much if it's anyway small fish but that would be cool so this would actually give a, a proper meaning to to this pond um yeah i will do a lot of um backstage uh, building here to make sure that this doesn't look as ugly as it does right now so a lot of foliage will cover this side up but then we actually come to the island and you can see this is where the koalas live you have this wonderful uh, little uh, sign here and we come to the sit and this is like a walk-in habitat as you can see the koalas are just running around here and um yeah yesterday evening i came to a very weird realization i thought it was a bug that the animals can swim and always cross the river and whatnot um, but in fact koalas actually are decent swimmers and I did not know that and I just you know needed to find that out yesterday so they really have their little swimming area here um, are you just going to that tree can you do this for us just oh look at that they're all sitting in this tree oh boy I really like that oh yeah thanks I guess 
<laughs> and he's like, oh, well, no, that's full. I'm just gonna go. Okay, just quickly ch try to change the lighting a little bit, but there, there's no way to get them into the sunlight directly. But yeah, I just love that. Look at that, they're just all chilling in that tree. Oh my lord, this is just actually how they should do it. And the other one is just wandering around. Anyways, the idea about this area, you have this little koala info point over here. And the idea would be that this is like a little, um, it's not like a pet station, but this would be where um, the keepers can tell you a little bit about the koalas. Maybe you can wash them or feed them or whatever, or they can just grab some stuff. Like a little bit of a more info um, edutainment kind of an idea and then you have this like open habitat over here where the animals run around and yeah it's it's funny though like the entrance to this habitat let me just show you is like hidden no it's not really hidden but it's over here it's it's kind of pointless you know because um, in fact this habitat would not need like an entrance and of course I made these um, these areas here with elephant grass as you know and the same goes uh, to the other side there's also elephant grass down here so that they just do not escape and then you have these little raised platforms over here to look back into the habitat if you want um, oh there's just one leaving the tree oh both are leaving the tree look at that this looks actually looks kind of cool to be honest um, and I think the viewpoint it really gives this Australian vibe to me just as I wanted to have it um, I was also thinking of putting more than just four koalas in this habitat just because this is kind of spread out and I can use it quite nicely. Um, the, I think that would the benefit um, the, the benefit would be quite high for this habitat. Yeah, and now as I said, this will be the roo farm at the end um, that you can really go here and have a look over to the bossy roos. Um, they will live then in here and this is also the way how to kind of sync this all into the background. I will use some Australian uh, trees over here just to make sure it looks a bit more like that and as you can tell from things I did here I always put them in some pottery or like some little kind of covers so that in case in the winter I would imagine that this is how they are able to hold these plants in the zoo. You know it's Disney we always use that as the excuse they have a lot of money so they can make them grow um, and have some heating stuff going on here so to, in order to grow these trees. Um, and if, if that's not realistic enough for, for you, you know, we can just imagine that these are fake trees because Disney still has enough money to make these fake trees look just as good as the real ones. Um, yeah, so I, I'm making excuses here, I know, but uh, it's just I wanted to do it that way and I think it would be very weird to just use real trees. Um, even though I'm looking into doing something hyper-realistic soon, um, I am looking at doing a, a little, um, let's say, animal animal station so to say but you know i will talk more about that in the future now talking of which future and stuff let's wrap this episode up by looking at the entrance and there's a particular reason why um the this whole project really was a blast for me to build i experienced a whole bunch of new techniques how to do stuff i um experienced a lot of uh, different architectural styles i could uh, use some of the animals in different ways um i really was pleased with the fur variants of our wolves for example i am um, now could build like a coral reef which i haven't done in the game yet and so a lot of things that were really good but i think it's it's time to wrap it up and as you can see the only thing really missing in this zoo is the main street and here is the point where you guys come into play now I have a little contest in mind and I would love that you guys step in to be part of this project again. Just as we did with the Sky Gardens where you provided all the blueprints for these wonderful skyscrapers. It would be awesome if you guys could create some Main Street-ish buildings. So I, what I require is one Main Street building and what I basically need is only the facade and the backdrop as a little blocky building. Just as a real Main Street would be, you know, you don't need to do the full building. Um, you can either do a fully flat one or a corner building as you prefer um, and I would assemble that. I think what I would need is a building that is each time um, 4x4 or 6x6 uh, pieces or blocks big and is obviously borrowing the style of this entrance. Hence I will give you this entrance as a blueprint with this episode. You'll find that in the description down below and then you can use it. As soon as I've got enough entries, you can do it in the Discord, you can put it in. I will make a little um, dedicated thread for it so you can put the blueprint in there. I will then assemble this together and I will let you guys decide which is your favorite Main Street building. And this person will win a DLC code for a 
um, wonderful game. I'm not saying random game, I will get a good game for you guys um, that is maybe an indie game in early access or whatnot. I will. I do have some ready um, of, of codes I didn't use, um, simply it's not my test of game, but I think there are a lot of good games I have for you guys that you can check out, so it will be a cool prize and obviously I will make um, this entire area over here will be separated, this is what I will do. There will be a whole dedication memorial really naming who did which building. Um, so I hope that you guys are interested in doing that. I would love to showcase that and just wrap this project uh, um, up as a little community thing again because that is what it all is about, you know, community and interaction and then just put like a whole huge uh, forest around, make some backstage and it will be done in one more episode. This is the plan. This is the way, okay? So because Mandalorian is starting soon again, I need some time to watch this, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, so that should be it for today. I really hope you uh, like this very long episode and um, please make sure to let me know all your feedback about the Australian area in the comments down below. Do you like it? Anything to mention? Um, would you love to take part with this uh, contest? It's also something very important. And let me also know what was your favorite part now as we basically did everything we could with the pack of the Australia pack. So many thanks. Have a wonderful uh, Sunday, everyone, or Monday, whenever you're watching that. And see you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. I really hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, I was really happy to have you here. In case you enjoyed it and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to consider subscribing. You can do it via this button here. And if you want to see more, uh, there's some cool other stuff linked here for you. This is suggested for you personally. That's pretty cool. And in case you want to support the channel a tiny bit more, you can do it via this wonderful Hype Camel link over here. I really would appreciate it. And also, big thank you already to all the people who do already support the channel. Really do appreciate that. But now, have a wonderful time, guys and I catch you in the next one.